which is actually the province with the highest paying minimum wage in Canada. This is actually a territory and not a province. It has one of the least population in Canada and it's a very small city. If you have guessed right, then kudos to you if you... Hey guys, it's your girl Whisk Queen back again with another video. If this is your first time on my channel, thank you so much for joining. Please consider subscribing down below and be sure to turn the post notification bell on as well so you can stay notified each time I post a new video. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for joining. You know the vibes. Please give this video a thumbs up. Don't hesitate to leave a comment down below and don't forget to share with your friends as well. So in today's video, I'll be sharing with you guys minimum wage across Canada. It's a new year. Happy New Year, by the way, guys. I hope your dreams come true this year. And I hope this year is a better year for every one of us. So, I know a bunch of people or some people or maybe myself, I have one of my goals is to improve my income this year. And I know some people out there also want to do the same. If you are coming to Canada soon or you are going to be new in Canada or you are already in Canada, it's also very important for you to know um, the minimum wage across Canada. That way you can plan yourself, you can decide on where to go to. Of course, you are not going to base the reason for you to move to a particular province solely based on the uh, minimum wage. There are also other things you have to consider. I have a video on factors to consider before moving to whatever province. I'll link it up here and in the description box as well so you can go check it out there. I'm excited about this video because it's highly requested and I understand why people would want to know more information about minimum wage that way you can plan if Canada is actually really worth it or if it's maybe the sacrifice you're making or whatever you're leaving from your previous country or your home country is going to what you moving into Canada for so the objective of this video would be to educate you on minimum wage across Canada secondly to also inform you about the number of hours to earn overtime pay in Canada and also highlight the province with the highest and the lowest minimum wage in Canada we would also review what are those factors that affect minimum wage and when does the annual review for minimum wage takes place so this video is actually sponsored by Moyo Health and Community Services. The project title is A Newcomer Journey, Storytelling Through Photography and it is led by Moyo Health and Community Services. It's actually funded by Immigration and Citizenship Canada, which makes the program entirely free. IRCC is one sponsoring the project, so um, Moyo Health is not charging you for leading this project. So it's free, you have nothing to lose and you have a whole lot to gain. So who is Moyo Health and what exactly do they do? Moyo Health is formerly known as Pew HIV and AIDS Network and they have provided a growing like several health promotion, education and social support services for people living with and that have been affected by systemic risk of HIV for communities across Pew region which includes Mississauga, Brampton and Caledon City. Are you a newcomer in Canada then this project is definitely going to be for you. If you are a newcomer as a permanent resident, maybe a living caregiver or maybe you came in as a refugee or you are one of the protected person, then this project is definitely for you. If you would like to share your migration experience in Canada using photography and storytelling then you should definitely consider this project. I can totally relate to the experience of a newcomer coming in Canada, the challenges and the fact that there could be something that would help you share your experience with other people that would be fun and you would also learn from you can also meet with other people in the course of the project and this way you never know who you are going to meet that is going to impact your life in the long run or in the short run and this is going to be a good way to network with other people connect with people and share your experience as well with new immigrants or future immigrants in Canada more information about this newcomer photo voice project this project is going to be an eight week long project where participants would meet every Saturdays over zoom and they would share their knowledge using photography and their experience as well using storytelling so the main goal of this project is to access the needs of newcomer communities including those living with HIV and AIDS and other chronic diseases such as diabetes and also those from Africa or Caribbean countries and people that identify as LGBTQ plus community, um, trans and cis women and other marginalized people as well. So this is going to be a way for you to share your experience, share your story and the community can assess your needs and identify what areas you need help with which is starting January this year. So I know a bunch of people out there have this new year, new plans and all that. So this is a very good project for you to start off the year with. I myself would also be participating in this project because I'm still a newcomer and there are a bunch of stories I would also like to share and I would like to learn from other people as well. So what are some of the things you would benefit during this program? You would learn how to use a camera which will be provided to all participants. You will be able to share your story of settling in Canada through photography. You will be able to meet new 
people and make connections as well you'll be able to learn about the community services that are available in your area and your community you'll be able to showcase your stories in an exhibition as well which i find very interesting and exciting and like i mentioned you would have opportunity to meet new people network with people grow yourself access employment education healthcare, and other kind of social support that people actually don't know exist a bunch of these things exist but the knowledge and information probably isn't reaching the right people so this is going to be a good platform for you to meet people you also have access to one-on-one -on -one settlement support by the organization as well so i think this is something very much fun and i totally look forward to it i also would recommend for you to join and participate in this project so you can enroll in the link in the description box if you also have questions i would link an email address to kamenda you can always send her an email she's super nice you can reach out to her if you have questions to clarify without further ado let's get to this video so i'll be going over the minimum wage by province and territories and I'll be starting off with the province with the least minimum wage and we'll be going up to the province with the highest minimum wage in Canada and territory as well and overtime pay is usually a time and a half and it starts from when that province has said to be the standard working hours for a week so as an example let's say Ontario you need to work for minimum of 44 hours for you to be able to earn overtime say for instance you work for 45 hours in a week and that means you earned overtime work for just one hour so it's the excess of the standard hours that would be counted as overtime for you then you'll be earning overtime pay for that one hour so one hour of your overall 44 hours would be a time and a half so that would be 1.5 times your current rate or if you are earning the minimum wage then the least any employer should be able to pay you would be the minimum wage multiplied by 1.5 40 hours per week is actually the federal standard for um, for you to be able to earn overtime pay so you need to work about 40 hours for you to earn overtime pay federally but each province has their own different rule that would override that of the federal government there are several factors that affect minimum wage in Canada one of which could be the industry you work in or your profession there are some industry that has like lesser minimum wage compared to the general minimum wage so if you work in the services industry and you earn tips your minimum wage might be different from others and also if you are a student below the age of 18 your minimum wage that would apply might also be lesser than the general minimum wage there's actually a federal bill that requires for each province to review their minimum wage each year and the minimum wage rate is usually to be increased the May of each year as well annual increase is supposed to be April of each year according to um, cost of living index so basically they have to consider a bunch of other factors before they can increase minimum wage one of which is definitely cost of living and if the, if the cost of living during that year or during that one year period has increased or has gone up over that period then there's a high chance that um, the minimum wage would also be increased but this is the general minimum wage that we are reviewing so we are starting off with the first province with the least minimum wage in Canada and we are starting with Saskatchewan Saskatchewan has minimum wage of $11.45 and this was applied or these two places October of 2020 so um, there is a chance that the minimum wage might be reviewed later on this year but there is no guarantee you have to work above 40 hours a week for you to be able to earn overtime pay which is a time and a half coming up in number two the second province is New Brunswick the minimum wage is actually $11 and 70 cents and this was applied April of 2020 so there is also a chance minimum wage might be increased later on this year for New Brunswick and for overtime hours you have to work above 44 hours for you to be able to earn overtime pay which is also a time and hour the third province we have on our list which is number three is Manitoba province of Manitoba the minimum wage is $11.90 and this came into effect October of 2020 as well for you to earn overtime pay in Manitoba you have to work about 40 hours a week up next is Newfoundland and Labrador and the minimum wage is $12.15 this came into effect October of 2020 as well and for you to earn overtime you have to work 40 hours per week and um, maximum of 10 hours per day so if you work maximum of 10 hours per day or you work 40 hours a week you're going to earn overtime pay for Newfoundland 
I would say the minimum wage for Newfoundland is kind of low compared to how much they pay in sales tax, which is 15%. I mean, Nova Scotia's minimum wage is currently at $12.55, and this took effect since April of 2020. There has been a review in the minimum wage, should, which should be increased to $13.10, and this should be applied April 2021 this year. So, uh, people staying in Nova Scotia, or if you're planning to move to Nova Scotia, um, there's a high chance that you'll be meeting the increase later on this year. Up next, we have on number six, we have Prince Edward Island, which is currently at $12.85. And um, there isn't any information on whether or not there will be an increase this year for the minimum wage in Prince Edward Island. The number of hours for you to earn overtime pay in PEI is 48 hours. I think that's actually a lot. The same thing with Nova Scotia as well. Up next, we have on number seven as Quebec. Quebec currently earns $13.10 for minimum wage and the minimum hours for you to work for you to be able to qualify for overtime pay is 40 hours a week which is the standard the minimum wage took effect may 2020 and there is a high chance the minimum wage would also be reviewed this year hopefully there is a chance for quebec residents to be able to um, earn more up next we have northwest territory which is not a province it's a territory they currently sit at 13 dollars and 46 cents for their minimum wage there is a chance the minimum wage might be increased this year there isn't any guarantee yet because there's no information on that this minimum wage has taken effect since april of 2018 so I'm hoping there is a chance for people living in the Northwest Territory for them to be able to earn more later this year. And overtime starts from 40 hours plus a week for you to be able to earn overtime pay in Northwest Territory as well. Coming up next is number 9. We are going to talk about Yukon. Yukon has 13.71 minimum wage and this took effect since of 2020 there's a high chance the minimum wage might be reviewed this year there's no information on how much is going to be increased to yet same as for northwest territory the overtime starts from 40 hours plus a week as well for yukon number 10 on our list is ontario ontario currently pays 14 dollars and 25 cents as the minimum wage and this took effect in october of 2020 there could be a chance for an increase later on this year but there isn't any information specific on that yet as well the overtime in ontario starts from 44 hours a week up next we have number 11 and we have british columbia british columbia currently pays slightly higher than ontario at 14 dollars and 60 cents up next we have alberta as number 12 and they are currently paying 15 dollars and this took effect since October of 2018, which is actually a long time. For the longest of time, Alberta was paying the highest minimum wage in Canada per hour. And overtime hours also starts from 44 hours per week. Um, hopefully, there might be an increase. There isn't any information yet on that, but I'm not sure if there will be an increase for minimum wage in Alberta for this year. The last on the list, which is actually the province with the highest paying minimum wage in Canada. If you have guessed right or you know this information already then kudos to you if you don't know yet i'll be spilling it in the next three seconds so this is actually a territory and not a province and it's a very small city it's passed with very few number of people they currently pay 16 dollars per hour and this was increased from 13 dollars to 16 dollars that was a big jump since 2016 so for over four years they were paying 13 dollars and there was an increase or a big jump in 2020 by three dollars so they currently pay 16 dollars and overtime starts from 40 hours a week in nunavut nunavut is not a province it's a territory most people don't know that and it's a very small city like i mentioned so there you have it the minimum wage across canada so based on this information would you or do you have any specific province in mind or is there a specific province that you are thought was paying the highest minimum wage in canada and uh, this video disappointed you let me know in the comment section um for me i would say uh, you would have expected that province of Ontario will be paying the highest minimum wage because of the population and also the cost of living. However, on the contrary, they rank number 10. And they also have 44 hours for overtime pay, so you need to work for 44 hours for you to be able to earn overtime in Ontario. But it's still very much reasonable for you to work for 4 hours compared to province like PEI or Nova Scotia that is asking you to work for 48 hours for you to be able to earn overtime pay. Uh, I mean... 
So that's pretty much it for this video guys if you enjoy watching it make sure you give it a thumbs up if you learn something new make sure you give it a thumbs up as well if this video has surprised you or provided you an information that you had no knowledge about give it a thumbs up as well and don't forget to subscribe down below share this video with your friends as well and i'll see you guys in my next video in the meantime stay confident bye